good afternoon or good morning or good evening everyone um so well first of all um uh, thank you to all the audience who uh, have taken your time off from your busy schedule to come and uh, watch this webinar and get to know your future professors and also there's a current student here also uh, to give his experience but more on that later uh, well, my name is Darren and I'm responsible for the uh, master program of uh, the recruitment of the master program of uh, all the students um, with me here today we have uh, Matthias Rieger uh, he is I don't know how you I hope you can see his name is at the bottom we also have he is the current course leader of the economics of development program we also have Elisayos we have Zemzem uh, and we have John Krusati and the current student David um, without further ado I would like to pass on the floor to Matthias Matthias as, uh, maybe you can explain a little bit about your background and what you do and uh, about what is what does the course leader entails and also a little bit of the teaching uh, that you do. Yeah, thank you, Darren. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's uh, webinar on the major economics of development. We're all glad to see you. And we're also glad if you can watch the recording if you couldn't attend today. So welcome again. My name is uh, Matthias. I'm the convener of the major in the economics of development. And that means I coordinate the major. I follow students, on their journey throughout the, the, the program. And um, of course, I'm also surrounded here by my co-teachers. And um, so you will not only see me, but of course, also uh, all of the faces that you see today here. Um, just about my background, I'm a development economist and most of my work is experimental in, in, in nature. So I work a lot on behavior of people. So for instance, at the moment, I work a lot on um, uh, tuberculosis uh, in South Africa and trying to understand how we can get people to take their medication. Um, but I'm also involved in other projects, uh, mainly related to health issues. And in the program, I teach a course, for instance, on um, human behavior and experiments and development, which um, touches upon, upon some of the research that I do, but also other behavioral issues. Um, that's a brief introduction about myself, and I want to hand over to maybe um, my colleague Eliseos Papirakis, who was a previous convener of this major, and I took over and I learned a lot from as well. So a warm welcome also from my side. I and Matthias, I and Matthias actually got hired at the same uh, time in 2014. So um, Matthias specializes on microeconomics, and I'm what we call a macroeconomist. So I often work with uh, cross-country uh, uh, macro data. I've worked a lot on uh, um, countries that rely extensively on mineral resources. That's my main specialization regarding economic growth processes, um, institutional development, educational development. And I also work quite closely also with many of uh, my master's students. So we'll talk about this later on, but uh, many of the papers that I published were actually co-authored and in many cases led by uh, the master students that we have here at the ISS. Papers on um, um, Venezuelan migration and where many Venezuelan refugees went to, uh, the Ebola crisis in West Africa and its macroeconomic impacts, or uh, the uh, effects of a transparency scheme in the mining sector in uh, Latin America. So quite a lot of nice and interesting topics. And now I suppose I can pass now uh, to uh, Sam Sam on the Sam Sam. You are on my right. I don't know. Of course, everybody might see a different screen, but I see you on my right hand side. <laughs> okay, thank you, Elisaios. Uh, thanks everyone for joining the webinar. My name is Sam Sam Shukuteshuka, and I am um, I am uh, currently I'm a teacher. Uh, I am one of the teachers of uh, the Economics of Development specialization. Uh, but uh, when you arrive, uh, you will um, see me as your uh, course leader because I will be taking over the convenership from uh, Matthias soon. Uh, and you will be my first batch of uh, batch that I will be convening. In terms of my background, I am also a development economist. Uh, so as to call myself, I am a microeconomist like Matthias. And I work mainly on health issues, but I also work on 
uh, social protection uh, evaluation of uh, impact evaluation of programs, mainly in the areas of food security. And um, uh, in terms of my teaching, uh, I will be also the first person that will be teaching you uh, the courses within the ECD major. So I am. Um, I will be teaching regression and uh, data analysis, um, a technique course, but at the same time, it is one of the foundation courses within uh, the ECD major. And uh, later on, uh, you will you will uh, continue with me as uh, in my um, in my role as a convener, but uh, also in my role as mentor um, a person that you will uh, not only mentor but uh, I will be also supervising uh, students so um, we, the journey will continue with me until uh, you finish and if you have any questions uh, related to uh, the courses etc uh, what courses to take etc I will be uh, discussing with you all this and uh, yeah Maybe uh, now I pass the floor to uh, John, who is also um, a colleague yeah. and who is going to be a future convener. Yeah. Yes. Before before John takes on the floor, I just wanted to add that Zemzem here is also, he, or used to be a master's student at ISS very long time ago. Yeah. And she graduated and pursued her PhD at ISS as well. Yes. And now she's a, like, a professor. So... She's through and through ISS. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So this could be yeah. also one of your pathway if uh, for the audience who would like to one day become a lecturer or something like that. Uh, no, yeah. John, please go ahead. Thanks. Dan. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, uh, Samson. And hi to everyone. Matia, David, Liseo, Zara, and Samson. Um, let me start with a bit of my background, if you will. Um, I'm Ecuadorian. I'm an economist by training. In my, um, I did my doctoral studies in Germany, and I then was uh, recruited by the ISS. Um, I mainly do apply economics. Um, I'm in kind of an, an intersection between what you call spatial economics and development economics. I seen I look into some particular development indicator, indicators like human development indexes, economic activity, but in order to do that, I analyze processes uh, associated with geoanalysis, mainly natural disasters or georeference data of many sorts. That's what I do in terms of research. And I also teach a couple of courses that you will see uh, are kind of foundational for our major. One of those is the principles, principles of economics, um, development economics, sorry. And um, I also co teach a couple of courses in some other uh, faculties. Um, I don't know what else to say apart from that. Of course, if you, if you have questions, I can explore more. Yeah. Yes, but I, I think it's that's very much it. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Uh, in addition yeah. to that, we also have today uh, a current student, uh, David from Colombia. Uh, David, uh, maybe you want to. Uh, share your experience of uh, the ECD major, maybe a little bit about your background as well, and uh, maybe talk a little bit about your trajectory of your research paper and maybe after what you want to do after that. Uh, yes, thank you for the invitation and greetings to everyone. My name is David Leon or David, if you prefer. Uh, my background is I'm an economist. And I get my grade in Colombia. I studied a master's previous to, to this one in Colombia as well. Um, mainly my field of work, uh, it's been uh, related to agricultural economics. I've been uh, working with some go uh, Colombian government agencies, as well with uh, the UNDP, uh, mainly for Colombia in the matters of uh, financial inclusion and some impacts in, in some uh, uh, policies that have been developed in in Colombia, uh, about my my research project, I want to to find out if there if there if is there any relationship or any impact between the agricultural insurance in Colombia and the and the and the income of the households. 
So that's like a like a overview of of my of my background. Yeah, thank you so much, David. Are you planning to stay here in the Netherlands once you graduate? Or are you planning to go back? Do you have something waiting for you back home? Uh yes. Uh, um, my my studies here are funded by by an, an a scholarship that is given by the Dutch government. So the the scholarships like states that I have to come back to Colombia once I have to I I have finished my my studies here, but of course I cannot discard any project that uh, shows up. Yeah. Okay. Um, for all the audience out there, David has the Orange Knowledge Program scholarship. Uh, one of the criteria is he has to go back, but there is option of coming back and staying in the Netherlands for one year uh, in the future as well. Uh, they call it the search year visa. So uh, just so everyone knows. Okay, so thank you so much for all the introduction and your background. Maybe we can talk about the teaching method uh, within the ECD. Every, every major, they have different teaching method, I assume. So, um, I don't know who would like to explain a little bit more to the audience so that they can get a rough idea of the expect uh, an expectation of uh, what the ECD teaching is, um, teaching method is. Um, anybody want to go? Maybe Samson is best place because she went through the program and she's teaching in it. So she Samson. will be the convener. <laughs> <laughs> okay um maybe um to say um uh, something about the teaching method within uh, ecd uh, i can say that um starting from uh, this is something that started when i was a student and which i have also continued uh, while teaching ecd is a best place where you find a combination of both theoretical and empirical teaching. There is evidence that is coming, which applies the theoretical teaching that we teach in the class. And all the teachers with an ECD, they, they bring their research to the class. So there is a clear uh, mix between theory and practice. And that is um, initially what attracted me to ECD when I joined uh, the master's program is this combination and this has continued and all the ECD teachers uh, all the teachers with an ECD they have different projects and these projects are used as examples and the data that are collected with with this uh, within the research they are brought to the class and the students get hands-on ex um, practice on real world examples that that come from this uh, research. And uh, there is also this combination of micro and macro with an ECD. And uh, this is also uh, something which attracts, which attracted me and which also attracts uh, current and future students. So yeah, the uh, teaching method and uh, we also have like these uh, contemporary um, topics like behavioral economics, which is uh, now part of the uh, ECD teaching. And we also have um, John who is bringing special economics to, uh, to the floor. So there are uh, lots of dynamics and uh, the, the teaching has all these dynamics uh, and perspectives. Uh, within the, the uh, teaching. Uh, Elisaios, uh, you may add. Only if you are done, Zemzem. Yes, I'm done. Well, what I wanted to add is, um, I mean, I also compared with my own master's, which was more than 20 years ago. Uh, but I think what makes ISIS a special place, not a special, a special place, <laughs> is uh, um, is first of all, uh, being a development studies uh, institute. Uh, within the classroom, it really looks like uh, basically um, a summary, uh, sorry, summary microcosmos of the United Nations. You'll see basically people from all over the world that bring their own experiences. Also people from different um, uh, academic backgrounds. So sometimes, you know, some of our students who do the MA in development studies with a major in development economics, 
Some of them, they have a background in politics, some in economics, some international relations, some in uh, geography. And that makes it a very interesting uh, interaction. And because of this also, we spend quite a lot of time making sure that everybody starts basically uh, the masses at the same level. So we don't assume that there is prior knowledge. We don't assume that everybody who starts remembers everything regarding statistics and econometrics that they've done in the previous degree. We basically uh, give a lot of refresher courses to make sure that everybody is equally equipped um, for the studies that will uh, follow. Edisayos, uh, uh, how important is having a background in, um, is it, do you need an advanced background in statistics and econometrics or just the basic or what, what do you, what is the criteria, let's say? Well, I mean, Typically, uh, looking at the applicants, we want them to have a little bit of background in uh, economics and statistics. So not necessarily a degree in economics, but um, let's say as part of the previous uh, studies, as undergraduate students have taken a couple of courses that relate to economics or statistics. Um, so even if they have studied political science, for example, it's like they may have taken one course uh, either in microeconomics or macro macroeconomics or something that is called global economy. Um, so uh, at least some exposure. Uh, okay. Um, David, um, is there something you want to add? Because you're going through now uh, whatever uh, Elisayos and Zemzem has mentioned. You actually are going through at the moment. Would you like to add something? Uh, yes, I mean, I think the precisely the thing that the fact that differentiates ECD from another majors is that you have a, a strong like uh, a run to the empirical work, and I think that's very important. I have to I have to confess that at first uh, the first moment I was enrolled in AFES because I want to. Uh, like get in deep about the, the agricultural matters, but is is more related with agrarian matters. That is is kind of different, and uh, it's different approaches. Both uh, are very 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 uh, like precise and accurate in what the the extent and about the scope of each of each major. Uh, but uh, definitely uh, for me, uh, AFES uh, has a, a, a background uh, or it's related more with political economy. That is very good, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's very theoretical. So uh, in my case, I, I would prefer, or I prefer the, that uh, the, the empirical work that is developed in, in ECD. And I, I think is is uh it's an, an an advantage because you not only like keep with the theoretical work but also the empirical um thank you david um for those who was wondering what afs is is the agriculture major by the way uh so david was enrolled in the agriculture major at the beginning but he quickly changed to the economics of development because he thought that it fits more of his background uh, so I hope you made it well. I think you did a good choice. A um, little bit about coursework information. Um, I don't know, some ex coursework can be, I don't know, readings, assignments, or what kind of uh, coursework, courseworks do you think students should be aware of prior to coming or prior to coming to ISS and uh, participating in the ECD major? Um, anybody would like to add, uh, say something about it? Maybe we can start with David again, because David, you are going through it as we speak. Can you a little bit elaborate uh, the kind of coursework that you had to do uh, up until now? Uh, yes, um, as it's it's been told that uh, we have like these uh, approaches uh, between microeconomic and macroeconomics. Uh, with uh, empirical exercise like through these courses. So the 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 perk here is that uh, it's not about the mainstream in economics that is this is about. I mean is I maybe this is uh, different from another uh, uh, from another masters in economics that you have to take in account that is not about 
the, the mainstream in economics about the optimizations of the micro um, at micro level, but uh, it's more about empirical exercises in developing countries, the evaluation, the assessment in, in, in different, uh, in different uh, contexts. And, uh, and I think that is very useful. And uh, of course, uh, it's not, uh, as, as, as Elisayo says, it's not uh, mandatory that you have uh, a background in economics or statistics, but it will help. It will be re really helpful that you have some hints or you have some information or be in touch with this, with this, uh, with this uh, kind of uh, methodologies. Thank you, David. Anybody else would like to add um, to the kind of coursework that uh, students, the future students will be expected to take on? For example, I don't know, um, any places that they'll be visiting or uh, a lot of reading materials, exams? Yeah, I, I can comment a little bit. I think there's a great, once you arrive here, there's a great variety of assignments and um, tasks you have to do. And uh, this is again also to make sure that you're good at theory, but also empirics and then practice. So for instance, this year's batch went to visit the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And we were um, discussing with policymakers at the ministry about you know, current global affairs and the Dutch um, global strategy you know, when it comes to um, sustainable development, for instance. And so again, um, there the students could apply and bring into the discussion some of the things that they learned in John's course on the foundations of economic development, or even in, in um, Semsim's more methodological classes. So this again, something that we try to do throughout the whole program. So that's one example. Another example I can give, for instance, from my current teaching, I teach a course in behavioral economics. I also try to uh, link students to policy issues that are happening in the Netherlands, because nowadays policy issues are global. So you will see very similar problems in, you know, my country in Germany, in David's country in Colombia, and in Samsung's countries, country Ethiopia, uh, in nature. And we try to kind of pick these out, out as well. So this year in my course, policy, an NGO and policymakers from Rotterdam approached me. They were worried that um, the turnout at elections among young voters is very low. And they said, well, Matthias, can your students, can your course work on some behavioral insights to, as to why uh, young people are not voting in local elections? And so this is going to be a problem set that students can work on as a team, but also individually. And then if something nice comes out, they can present um, this work to an NGO and, and also uh, Dutch people can learn from the experiences um, that the students are bringing, uh, bringing here to the Netherlands. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, anybody else would like to add uh, from the class? Because I understand it's not just visiting within the Netherlands. You also have study trips abroad uh, that uh, students have, well, are encouraged to participate in. Um, I'm not sure where they went this year. Uh, somebody would like to say something about it? Uh, maybe I, I should say something about this because I am the one who was with the students when we went for the okay. study trip. Uh, this year we went to Austria, Vienna, and uh, we visited um, three institutes within uh, Vienna, uh, and we were... Um, we were uh, lucky to have uh, presentations for in all these uh, three institutes, and um, these presentations they were not only the the academic presentations that we normally get uh, in in seminars or workshops, but we were also um, presented about institutes, what they do, what kind of work they do, what kind of research. Uh, our researchers within uh, those institutes are engaged in, and uh, they that it opened a possibility for uh, the students to compare also ISS uh, taking the lens of what uh, the other organizations and institutes were doing. And uh, last year we were we went to um, FAO in Rome, 
and uh, there we were uh, we had a couple of presentations and we were we had the opportunity also to visit the FAO the the headquarter uh, in Rome so uh, the study trips are organized in a way uh, for uh, the students to listen to presentations by outsiders but at the same time it also it's also an opportunity for students to go somewhere where they um they have um i i don't know not only the institutes but even like visiting other cities as a group yeah. and uh maybe like to add on um the coursework that uh, matthias presented the coursework within um the ECD major, not only the ECD major, but uh, within the development studies in general, is built in such a way that students start with foundation courses. Then they will be, uh, they they will be, they will get the opportunity to get courses that are uh, specifically focusing on the major that that they have chosen. So it is, uh, um, uh, they will be uh, getting major courses. And then they will have the possibility to um, to attend classes that are uh, focusing on research methodologies uh, and uh, also optional courses in uh, a way shaped uh, to specialize in such a way that it relates to their career path or it could be also relating to the research paper that they want to do within uh, the program. So there is a clear build up from foundation course to major course, research methodology or research technique course and uh, optional course that will uh, enable them uh, expand their opportunities for future career as well as uh, the research paper that they want to do. Thank you, Zem Zem. Um, I have a quick question for John. John, you mentioned earlier you, you teach the foundation of economics, right? Principles of economic law, yeah. During in, during the foundation course, right? Or is it's, it not? It's one of the main courses, one of the, the uh, yeah. Okay. Can you please little bit explain what does that course entails to the audience, please? So basically, we cover several micro and macro topics. Uh, I co-teach this with uh, Professor Mansoud Murshid. He's a macroeconomist. Of that of that course, I am doing the microeconomic part. In and in my part, basically, what we do is to look into processes or interventions and the impacts of these interventions on different development indicators. So the interventions could come for exogenous shocks, as we normally say. The economists come from many actors, so many of those could be random or at least possibly random, like natural shocks, which is more of my thing. So natural disasters, for instance, um, and what are, what are the impacts of these natural disasters on health indicators like we are doing with Matthias in a, in a working progress that we have, for instance, um, but also uh, police interventions that come from the government or the private sector. And, and in those particular studies, we look or discussions, we look into how these, these authors, these researchers, were able to plausibly claim that there was a causal effect of these interventions over specific uh, development indicators, many of many dimensions. We look into health indicators, economic indicators. So it depends on, on the type of paper. It changes every year, but more or less, that's what you have in the microeconomics part. Look into the impact of interventions on several indicators of development. Okay. Good. All right. Thank yeah. you so much, uh, John, for the explanation. Yeah. I just wanted the student yeah. audience to know a little bit about uh, what what you will be teaching as well. Um, yeah. We're almost uh, coming to the end of the webinar session. Um, but uh, so to the audience who are listening, uh, if you have any questions already, you can already uh, ask them in the using the chat box, and I will ask them aloud uh, for to the professors here and also the maybe the student David can answer as well. Um, I have one last question. Um, the career pathway after uh, students graduate from ISS, um, would anyone would like to share some light about this? Because this is also important when it comes to uh, decision making of the students. Uh, 
whether to come to ISS, whether to choose the ECD major or not. So uh, please. Yeah, I can say a couple of things and then the others can um, add to that. I think um, when in all our teaching, and when we design our courses, we have in mind that you want to find good jobs afterwards or you go back to your jobs because we want you to make a positive impact on the world, reducing inequalities around the world and so forth. And so a lot of the skills that we teach will be very valuable in the um, public sector, in the NGO sector, but also if you want to go into academia and also if you want to go to the private sector, because also the private sector has an important uh, role when it comes to reducing inequalities. And so that's something that's uh, in our philosophy. And in all of the sectors that I mentioned, we have a lot of success cases and students taking on very good jobs. So some of them, um, some of you will go back to jobs that you already have in ministries or NGOs, but some of you will also start new jobs in these fields. Um, we also have had students join institutions, international institution, institutions such as the World Bank, but also some of our students, for instance, go into academia. And so from the previous years, previous um, batch, so um, 21, 22, um, at least three students, like two or three students I can think of, they got into very good PhD programs outside of ISS. So we also help with that. Of course, there's also a PhD program at ISS that you might want to uh, consider, consider, but you might also afterwards go into other very good PhD uh, programs in Europe. So this year, I think we placed a student in a very good program in Berlin, another one in, in Prague and, uh, and so forth. And, uh, and then finally, also, you know, we have students that join the private sector. So in the past cu a couple of years, um, I, had a, I supervised a student who went on to work for IKEA uh, in data science. So, you know, um, the quantitative skills that we teach are highly sought after in the private sector as well. And so uh, that's a quick summary. But uh, do, you, do, you any, do you have any examples that come to your mind of careers after the, the program? Well, I mean, maybe something to add is that um, we also offer the opportunity to our students to do internships during their studies. Um, and especially, um, uh, let's say, after June, where most of the teaching is done and the students only uh, concentrate their attention on their research paper on the master's thesis, a lot of our students actually decide also to do um, um, an internship on the site that can also be actually appear on their degree certificate. And uh, studying in The Hague also has advantages because um, The Hague being, uh, let's say, the unofficial or the official capital of the Netherlands together with Amsterdam, here are all, all the ministries, all the headquarters of NGOs, many companies have their headquarters here because the parliament is here. So that makes it much easier to find an internship in The Hague. And we had many students who started with, you know, an internship of only working uh, one day a week within, for example, Oxfam. And this later on, it led to um, um, a full-time position. So that's always something to keep in mind. Thank you, Matthias and Elisarius. Anyone would like to add any more uh, to what already uh, Matthias and Elisarius mentioned? Every just a final thing, the final detail, is that we incentivize to, to create very good, uh, say, dissertation. So we have even have a fund to later look for a publication with one of the support of one of the professors. So we even have these particular orientations so we're supporting um, certain pathway, if you will. Um, maybe that's the only detail that I wanted to add. Thank you, John. Um, maybe no. um, uh, David can say a little bit about their uh, the study trip that uh, experience and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This, uh, the also the career pass. Uh, yeah. Opportunity. Uh, yes. Um, yes. I think two things re regarding to the field trip. We visited uh, a couple of, of organizations that uh, is related with uh, geoeconomics and geopolitics. That is very interesting, and it's uh, some topics that uh, maybe is not uh, like uh, maybe is, is more. It's more related with the job market, so you can realize how how is uh, the the requirements for for get a place for a future job. So I think that's very important considering your career options. 
that's one. And two, I think that is this is very important, not only for ECD, but for the masters. And I think the ISS pays a lot of attention in the research uh, process. So if you can compare the timeline with another uh, programs around Europe or around the world. Uh, the program is 16 months. So uh, we have a, a, a very good time to develop our research paper. So that's that's if, if you contrast with another programs that is around one year, uh, it's it's a, it's very good timing to to develop your research your research project. Why I say that? Because uh, in the moment that I choose the the university, in my mind was like uh, very difficult, like thinking about uh, a master's and write a, a research paper or a thesis uh, in less than a year, plus classes, plus, I mean, anything, uh, assignments, um, field trips. So I think that the one advantage of, of studying ISS is the, 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 the faculty and the university pays a lot of attention in the research paper. So uh, and I see I, I've seen many cases that you can get a Polish uh, and for previous batch, of course, and it's really interesting work. So I think uh, the timing is really important uh, regarding the the manage of your resources, uh, the time, the, the the staying here in the in the in the country, and that's something that you have to consider. I think is is really good because. Uh, uh, too many programs are really short, in, in my opinion, to develop a, a serious research project. Thank you, David. I wanted to ask you, would, what advice would you give uh, the students uh, that are going to come to ISS? I think maybe you already did that uh, with uh, what you just mentioned, or would you like to add something else? Uh, yes, I think that the experience is very complete, uh, as has as, as been told that. We have uh, the theoretical part as, as well as the empirical part in, in, in the master itself. Do you have, um, uh, I think uh, uh, the uh, uh, one fact that I, I like too much in the ISS is that you have uh, like a personal attention by the, by, the, by the teachers and the lecturers. You all the time can be in contact with them and they are like willing to, to give you the attention you, you need for anything even is related to, with your RP or for some courses or some assignments. So I think that the, the personal attention here is very important in the developing on, on, the, on the research project and the master itself. Uh, regarding the, the, the experience living in The Hague, it's a beautiful city. You can find anything really close to, to everything. It's, 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 it's not a big city. But uh, at the same time, uh, uh, have anything you 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 need in 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 uh, in a place to live. So I, I think that it's uh, an advantage. It's very well connected with the principal cities in the Netherlands. You have uh, Rotterdam, the, the twenty minutes away, and Amsterdam, 40, 40 minutes away. So it's very well connected. And. And that's it. I think for the people who who come in the, the this year, welcome. Yeah, thank you so much, David. Um, well, we come to the end of the webinar session. Uh, there was no questions, but not to worry. If you do have questions after these and uh, you would like to ask them, you can send me an email. My email address it's, is uh, study at iss.nl. That's study at iss.nl. Um, if you would like to speak to one of the professors, you can also send me the email and then I will forward it to the professors or to the students as well. Elisayos, you wanted to say something? Well, perhaps a, just to quickly mention, um, at some of our backgrounds, I mean, not our backgrounds, been Matthias, but Darren's and Zemzems and John John's, yeah. this is our building in The Hague. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's a wonderful historical building from the 1930s. So the whole building is for ourselves, for our facilities. Yeah, we are located in the center of the Hague. Um, so, in case you are wondering what this building is, yeah, and also want to mention, as David said, we are very uh, well located, close to other uh, major Dutch cities, but also in the center of Europe, and that gives us a major advantage compared, let's say, to if you would study in the US or in Britain. Uh, I often realize that our students, by the time that they graduate, they have visited another. 10, 15 countries within Europe, you know, because in two hours you are in Belgium and Brussels, in three hours you are in uh, Paris, 
in four hours by train, you're in Berlin in Germany. In another four hours, you're in Copenhagen in Denmark. Uh, and I, I suppose part of um, of uh, the enjoyment of studying is also this rich cultural experience that our students have when they come to the ISS. Yeah, that's perfect. It has to be balanced, of course. It's not all about studying. It's also about uh, visiting places, building a network, because that's what you want to get out of your master program, not just the theoretical base, but also the practical base as well. So thank you so much, everyone. I uh, really appreciate all your time. Um, so to, uh, to all the audience here, th this webinar is recorded. So I will be sending you this uh, recording sometime next week, I hope, uh, because I have to edit it first a little bit. Um, till then, if you have any questions, please uh, send me an email and uh, we'll get to them. So thank you so much and uh, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.